Hey everyone, welcome to another Codex Review. It's time to talk about the new Orcs Codex. Yep. Hey everyone, welcome to another Codex Review. As always, my name is Jay, and as always, I am super excited for this new Codex. Us Orc players have been waiting a long time, you know. Uh, sixth edition, sorry, seventh edition wasn't too kind to us. We got a codex very early on, and it hurts. It's kind of like Bright Knight players in eighth edition. Um, so we've been waiting for a good codex for a while. Now the question is, is this the codex we've been waiting for? Maybe. It's very different from what I was expecting from an Orcs codex, and I like it. Is it an improvement for sure? I definitely think so. Is it a meta changer? I don't know. Will it? you know, put fear into the hearts of Dark Eldar and Eldar players, or Astra Militarum, that's for time to tell. I do think Orcs are going to be better at shooting, and they're better overall. I think it's a stronger, you know, Orcs are in a stronger situation than they were a week ago. That being said, there are a lot of point changes in this codex, and I'll be going over all of them in this video. Um, I'll be doing a separate video probably tomorrow about you know some of the more uh, some, maybe some of the stratagems and relics. There are so many things in this codex. Uh, I'll see what I can cover in one video without getting exhausted. There's a lot of new stuff in this codex, a lot of changes. Yeah, so. First of all, I want to summarize uh, Orcs in 7th edition, and even to some extent 6th edition. Orcs were a lot of fun, but Orcs are kind of one of those armies that brings a knife to a gunfight. If you know what I mean. If you're an Orc player, you know what I mean. Orcs are very good at melee. Orcs are very good at melee. One of the best armies at melee, especially with so many bodies that you can field on the table. However, since 5th edition, the game has been focusing more and more and more and more towards the shooting side of the game, and rather than the assaulty side of the game. In fact, in 7th, in 8th edition, you can just walk out of combat. So, Orcs had that problem where you would take several turns to get across the table, get in close combat, and then your opponent would just walk away. And I've had that problem several times with playing Orcs. Um, that being said, of course, Orcs are very good at getting into combat, but then your opponent can walk out of combat and shoot you out of the water. So orcs have been the army that bring the knife to the gunfight, and I really do believe that this new codex is trying to improve that. So orcs are bringing a gun to a gunfight. In fact, orcs can be a very, very shooty army, and they're no worse off in close combat than they were before. They're just as good. Um, yeah, they're, they're just as good. Overall, as I said, there are a lot of point changes, and I'm going to go over them all. Um, my favorite HQs all disappeared from the Codex. They did. And uh, I'll talk about that now. I know what you're saying. If you, they disappear from the Codex, just use the indices. That's true. You can use the indices if you want. I don't tend to use the indices. Uh, I can if I want to. I just don't because I like to try out the Codex in its entirety and not the ghosts of, you know, indices past. That being said, I think the indices are going to be used still, and I'll go over that when I get to the HQ section. A lot of HQs got dropped from this codex, and basically the two it, the two HQs that I've used the most since becoming an Orc player are both gone. So that's pretty crazy. So, as I mentioned, Orcs got better at shooting. They got a couple new special rules. Now, first of all, I want to talk about their old special rules, and they got some clans. Um, the clans give them each a different power depending on you know which clan you choose. Um, Irigo is better than it was before. Irigo used to be you could only reroll failed charge rolls. Now it's it says uh, you can reroll charge rolls for this unit. It doesn't say failed. So if you rolled you know a three and it was enough to get in but not a lot, you can reroll the three. Furthermore, it does say when doing so you can reroll. All or any of the dice. There you go. That's a huge, huge benefit. Because let's say you rolled a 7, a 6, and a 1. You can just re-roll the 1. It's huge, right? It, there's no con to re-rolling that 1. 
So that's a huge improvement. Mob rule stayed the same. But there's two new rules. My favorite one is Daka Daka Daka. And what Daka 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 does is two things. First of all, each shiny roll and unmodified hit roll of six for an attack with a ranged weapon made by a model in this unit, that hit roll succeeds regardless of any modifiers. There you go. There were a lot of armies that were hitting orcs with minus two to hit, and so orcs couldn't hit because we need a seven. That fixes that alone. A six is an automatic hit, just like a one is an automatic miss in the game. So for orcs, six is a hit. That's huge. And the second part of this is my favorite part. In addition, immediately make an additional hit roll against the same target using the same weapon. So, sixes generate new attacks in this codex. That's huge, once again. If you think about Ludas, for example, that means half the Ludas hits because they need fives. Most orcs need fives to hit. There's a couple exceptions in this codex. But... Most orcs need fives to hit, and that means on a five, half the hits is going to generate new attacks. And I've been playtesting this, and you can generate a lot of attacks using this codex. Plus, it also happens in Overwatch. So think about like a, a Daka Jet, um, a Gorkonaut, the amount of firepower that they can produce, and uh, it just generates more attacks. And it's huge. And now I know what you're saying, you know, they need fives to hit, they need sixes to hit. But still, it really does help this codex. It really makes the orcs a lot more shooty and a lot more viable as a shooting army. Plus, there are some other things that you can take advantage of, i.e. clan traits. There we go. And uh, that's awesome. That is my favorite new thing of this codex, is Daka Daka Daka. Most things have it. Second, Speed Mob, which all is just pertains to Speed Freaks. The first time this unit is set up on the battlefield, all of its models must be placed within six inches. From that point onwards, they're separate models. It's just a, you know, it's just their rule. And so, next we should get to the clans. Now, once again, I'm going to refer back to these clan traits throughout this codex review because each one is beneficial to certain um, uh, certain things. But also, as I said, so special abilities as well. Uh, orcs also gain if it's battle forged. Uh, all orc detachments, excluding super heavy auxiliary detachments, gain the following abilities. This is ours, Zogoff, which is um, objective secured. Clan cultures, which pertain to orc. Uh, all what are called clan Units in orc detachments, excluding those in super heavy detachments. So once again, no stompa. Gain a clan culture. Um, yeah. Uh, guns for hire. Flash kit units can be included in an orc detachment without preventing other units in that detachment from gaining a clan culture, which is nice. And grots. Units entirely can entirely composed of Gretchen, cannot benefit from any clan culture. In addition, orc stratagems can only be used on these units if it implicitly says Grot. Cool. I'm just going to quickly message someone. And so, clan cultures. These are the clans. There's Goths, Bad Moons, Evil Sons, Death Skulls, Snake Bites, Blood Axes, and Free Buddhas. Let's go over them and why they're going to be awesome in this codex. Goths, no mucking about, which is every time you roll an unmodified hit roll of six in close combat, it generates an additional attack. Once again, huge. You could have like seven attack boys, essentially. Uh, these ones cannot, these attacks do not further, you know, create attacks. Bad Moons. This is my favorite one, and I've been playtesting this one, and this is incredibly powerful when combined with Daka Daka. Reroll, hit rolls of one for attacks made by melee what made by, my, by models with this culture in the shooting phase. Huge. Yeah, that's huge. So, 
basically, reroll ones to hit. So now you're hitting on fives with orc boys. Reroll ones, sixes produce additional attacks. You'd be surprised on how these work out for you. That means shooter boys with the Bad Moon's uh, clan are going to be amazing. More cannot, Gore cannot, any can, uh, any uh, walker list in general, Daka Jets, Ludas, any heavy support choice is going to love Bad Moons. That's huge. Evil Sons, plus one to movement, plus two to movement if you're a speed freak. In addition, uh, plus one to charge rolls, plus two to charge rolls if you're a speed freak. Yeah. Also, in addition, models with this culture do not suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for advancing and firing assault weapons. Pretty cool. So you could advance with bikers. Think Evil Sun's bikers. You advance and just daka, and no penalty, no minus one. Orc boys, running up, advancing, plus one, shooting, no penalty. Huge, once again. Death Skulls, now I'm a Death Skulls player. Death Skulls get a six up invulnerable save and objective security pertains to all infantry rather than just troops. Um, Snake Bites is a six up feel no pain. Um, Blood Axes, a unit with this culture gains benefit of cover even while they're not in cover, providing that the opponent is shooting them from 18 inches or more, or, uh, from more, more than 18 inches away. In addition, units with this culture can shoot or charge even if they, but not both. Even if they fell back this turn. That's cool. Free Buddhas. Add one hit rolls for attacks made by models with this culture if any other friendly unit with this culture within 24 inches has destroyed an enemy in, this, in that phase. That's cool. So once again, those are the rules. I love Bad Moons. Evil Suns is going to be really cool too. Um, and Goths is going to be pretty strong too. Those are the three that I think are going to be really... Uh, used in competitive environments. Death Skulls are cool too. It becomes basically like a mini Sisters of Battle where everyone's running around with six up and vulnerable saves. And it could really keep your boys alive. Um, but I think Goths for that plus one attack, making them even more salty, or Bad Moons making them that much more shooty, are going to be really used. Evil Suns make it faster. Cool. So now let's get to um, the Warlords. Before we get to the Warlords, let's talk about the Warlord traits. Now the Warlord traits are cool. My favorite trait is the Bad Moon specific Warlord trait, which is a four up and vulnerable save. Is a Warlord trait. That's a great Warlord trait. Um, warlord traits, follow me lads. Your Warlord gains a WA and breaking hence abilities. Once again, if you give, then you can give a, like a Big Mech with custom force field or a, um, a Weird Boy slash Warped, um, WA and breaking heads abilities. That's awesome. If your already has it, the range is increased by three inches. In addition, your, if your army is Battleforged, you receive an additional command point. Number two is big kill a boss. Add one to wound rolls for your warlord boss's warlord's attacks to target a vehicle or monster unit. Number three, art is nails. Add one to your warlord's toughness characteristic. Number four, brutal but cutting. Your you can reroll hit rolls in the fight phase for attacks made by your warlord. In addition, add one to damage characteristics of your warlord melee weapons if, in the same turn, they finish a charge move or charge or perform to your heroic intervention. Number five, cunning but brutal. At the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn begins, you can remove your warlord and up to three D3 friendly clan units from the battlefield and set them up again as described in the deployment section of the mission you are playing. If you pick up a transport, units embarked in the transport remain so when it was removed and set up again. Number six, might is right. Well, plus one to your warlord strength and attack characteristic. So then there's a bad moon one, bad moon's one specifically, which as I mentioned, is the four plus invulnerable save. I love it. It's called the best armor thief can buy. Blood axes. I've got a plan, lads. If your warlord is on the battlefield, roll a dice each for each command point you spend. When using stratagem on a six up, the command point is immediately refunded. Cool. Death Skulls, re-roll, wound rolls a one for, for attacks made by your Warlord that target enemy vehicle units. Yeah. In addition, the shooting phase, this Warlord can target enemy character units within 18 inches, even if they're not the closest enemy unit. Cool. Evil Sun Speed Freaks, War, your Warlord and friendly Evil Sun's units within 6 inches of them can charge if they fell back earlier in that turn. That's really cool. Free Buddhas. Reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly free Buddhas units in the fight phase while they're within six inches of your warlord. Goths, add one to your warlord's attacks characteristic. Snake bites, 
You can reroll morale tests for friendly snake bite units while they're within six inches of your warlord. Plus, friendly snake bite Gretchen units automatically pass morale tests while they're within 12 inches of the warlord. Cool. So that's that. So let's get to the HQs. Now, let's summarize the HQs. A lot of them got cut, and those that didn't get cut, points increased. Other than, I think, one or two major points increases. Uh, for the HQs, yeah. Um, yeah, major point increases. But okay, let's go through them. So Goskal Thraka, no change to Goskal Thraka other than he went up in points by 20 points. Now he's 225, he used to be 205. And so he's now 20 points uh, hot, worth more, still movement 5 inches, weapon skill 2 up, bliss skill 5 up, strength 6, toughness 6, 8 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 8, 2 up save, same weapons, great wah, boss is watching, 4 up and funnel, will save. Now I will, um, I'm going to speed through some of these because this codex is probably going to take me an hour and 10 minutes to go through, so I got to go at a relatively good pace. So next, the war boss. No more war boss and bike which is my favorite HQ that I've brought in so many times in this game. No more Warboss on bike. No more really anything on bike. Um, the Warboss on bike has been re replaced by the new um, vehicle, which the Death Killer War Trike, which is a little bit more expensive, has some cool rules, so we all have to buy a new model. Yeah. No more Warboss on bike. Warboss went up in cost by 10 points. Um, so base war boss is now 10 points more expensive, 65 points, used to be 55. Uh, still movement 5 inches, weapon skill 2 up, bullet skill 5 up, strength 6, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, 4 up save, you can give him a plethora of, of weapons, he has the wah, and breaking heads. So he's still a relatively good points cost for his points, he's going to be a good choice, but the problem is now your war boss is going to be slower, right, you can't get him in a bike. So you gotta get him on foot, and he only affects, of course, uh, the wall only affects infantry, not bikers anymore. Bikers are now affected by the other vehicle. So once again, it's a good choice. So is Goskal Thraka. The fact they both went up in points costs, yeah, unfortunate. Now, next, Big Mech with Shock Attack Gun. Another thing, no more Big Mechs with Custom Force Field. There's Big Mechs in Mega Armor with Custom Force Field, but no more Big Mechs with Custom Force Field. I have three of those models, Gone. That makes me a little sad. So Big Mac with Shock Attack Gun, still 80 points. Um, sorry, went down 20 points. Um, the big change is it is the Shock Attack Gun itself. Um, it still is a 60 inch range, heavy D6, strength 2D6, AP minus 5, D, D6. It used to be D3, now it's D6. So once again, you combine, you know, a Big Mac with Shock Attack Gun with the Bad Moon's uh, clan culture, he's hitting on fives, sixes produce an additional attack, reroll ones. You can see where I'm going here. It's AP minus five, D, D, six. That's huge, right? Huge. Uh, and of course, before firing his weapon, roll ones to determine the strength of all his shots. If the result is 11 plus, successful hits inflict D3 mortal wounds on the target in addition to any normal damage. That's pretty cool. You can have a, he's a big mechaniac, so he can repair a single clan vehicle within three inches. That model get, regains D3 lost wounds. Uh, it can only be done once per turn. And a Grot Oiler, once per battle, a Grot Oiler can assist its master um, in making repairs. If it does so, the model being repaired regains one additional wound. Cool. So that's Big Mech with Shock Attack Gun. Up next, Big Mech in Mega Armor. Really. I think got a little bit cheaper as well. Uh, and it's a mega armor. So it's movement four inches, weapon skill three up, plus skill five up, strength five, toughness four, five wounds, three attacks, there should be eight, two up save. And this is the one that you can give, you know, the teleporty, the, the teleport blasta, me custom mega blasta, kill saw, power claw, and of course the custom force field, which is huge. Um, you can give him a custom force field, and there's only two now. There's only two models in this codex that have the custum force field. Any unit entirely with nine inches gains a five open vulnerable save against shooting. Uh, it's the other one is of course the Morkanot. Weird boy, weird boy stayed the same. Now I thought the weird boy was going to get more expensive because weird boys are spammed in competitive lists, and they tend to be pretty cheesy. But no, they actually stayed the same, and they even got better because there's a stratagem for one command point before the battle. 
you can upgrade your Weird Boy to a Warped, which allows him to know two powers and to uh, cast two powers per turn. It doesn't say implicitly that they can deny the Witch twice per turn, though, so it looks like they can only deny the Witch once per turn if you upgrade them to a Warped. And there are some new Psychic Powers, so we might as well stop here for a moment and uh, go through the Psychic Powers. There's Edbanger, which is still the same before. Um, it's uh, Warp Charge of 8. If manifest, roll d6 compared to the toughness characteristic of the closest enemy model uh, that is visible and within 18 inches of the of the psyker. If it's if the result is higher, the model's dead. Warpath, uh, warp charge value of seven. Unit within 18 inches increase their attack characteristic by one. To jump, fists of gork. Uh, warp Church value of 6. If manifest, select like a friendly or character model that is visible to and within 12 inches of the Psyker. Add 2 to that model's strength and attacks characteristic until the start of your next Psychic phase. That's hilarious if you get to Goskal Thraka. Yep. Uh, maybe the Death Kill of War Trike. Yep. Or a couple other things. Even a War Boss. Pretty cool. To Crunch is uh, Warp Charge value of 8. If manifest is select an enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker, roll d6 for each model in that unit. For a 6, that unit suffers... For every 6, it suffers a moral wound. And then you roll 2d6. On a 10-up, you get to do it again. Yeah. Roar of Mork is uh, Warp Charge value of 8. If manifest is subtract 1 from the leadership characteristic of enemy units, well, they're within 18 inches of your Psyker. That's the end of the next Psychic phase. Sorry, until your next Psychic phase. So that's cool. And so as I said, you can upgrade your Weird Boy to a Warped. Weird Boys are, this is a no points change uh, to them. Weird Boys are 62 points. Up next, we have Boss Snickrot. Boss Snickrot went up one point to 70 points. It used to be 69. He, get, he got an extra toughness, so now he's... 6-inch move, weapon skill 2-up, ballistic skill 5-up, strength 6, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 7, 6-up save. Um, he also has a new rule called Throat Slitter. Add to 1 to wound rolls for attacks made with Boss Nikorot's melee weapons when targeting enemy units wholly within or on a terrain feature. He also has Red Skull Commandos. Reroll hit rolls of 1 in the fight phase for attacks made by friendly Blooding Black's Commando units. We'll learn within six inches of Snickrot, Sneaky as Git, Terrifying Killer, Cunning, uh, in, and uh, Cunning Infiltrator. Cool. Up next we have Boss Zagstruck, the Storm Boy HQ. And once again, uh, he's 88 points, no change in points. Really no change at all. Not that I noticed. Um, and as I mentioned, all these guys that I mentioned so far in this codex have Daka Daka Daka. Here we go, mob rule. Yeah, that's a, a special rule amongst everyone, pretty much. So Zagstruck, not really any change, still 88 points. Movement 12 inches, two up weapon skill, five up ballistic skill. Strength six, toughness four, six attack, six wounds, six attacks, leadership seven, four up save. He has his Devulture's Claws, which are strength plus two, AP minus three, DD three. Each time the bear fights, it can make no more than three attacks with its weapon. And three with a chop up. Cool. He's a cyborg body, so he's a five up invulnerable save. Sorry, um, cyborg body, which each time he loses a wound on five up, he doesn't lose the wound, so five up feel no pain. Full throttle. When Boss Zagstruck sort of advances, you can add six inches to his move characteristic instead of rolling a dice. But if you do, roll a d6 at the end of the phase. On one, he suffers a mortal wound. Yeah. Cool. And Drill Boss, friendly Goff Storm Boys units automatically pass morale tests while they were within six inches. Um, so once again, he's going to work very well with Goffs, so if you are, because he is a Goff, but um, if you have Goffs, you know, Storm Boys are going to be hilarious with Goff, because then they're going to get a bunch of attacks, you can run them behind Zagstruck, cool. Then up next we have the Death Killer War Trike. This is the new vehicle HQ. It's, it's the only um, non-fast attack new vehicle that the Orcs got in this codex. And... Uh, He's cool. Like, again, he replaces the same niche as the war boss on a bike. Slightly better shooting, not as good in close combat. Um, but uh, he's 120 points. 14-inch movement, weapon skill 2-up, skill 5-up. 
Strength 5, toughness 6, 8 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 7, 4 up save. He has a, uh, is a single model equipped with a killer jet. The crew is armed with a snake of claw and three twin boomsticks. So the killer jet has two modes, Burna and Kutta. They're both 8 inch range. Uh, Burna is assault d6, strength 5, AP minus 1, d1. The weapon automatically hits because it's a flamer. And the Kutta is 8 inch range, assault 2, strength 8, AP minus 4, d d6. And if the target is within half range of his weapon, so four inches, roll two dice when inflicting damage and discard the lowest. It's pretty cool. Snake of Claw is um, eight inch range, assault one for shooting. Strength four, AP nothing, D one. You can reroll wound rolls with attacks made with this weapon. And there's also twin boomsticks, which are 12 inch range, assault two, strength five, AP nothing, D one. If the unit is within half range, add one to hit rolls with this weapon. Snake of Claw and Melee is uh, Strength plus 2, AP minus 2, DD 3. You can reroll wound rolls for attacks with this weapon. So rather than minus 1 to hit, reroll wounds. Pretty cool. Some lower strength, but that's still pretty cool. Here we go. Mob roll, Daka Daka Daka. But they have the Speed Wah, which allows friendly clan, biker, and vehicle units within 6 inches of this model at the start of the charge phase that can charge even if they advance this turn. So, that's huge, because now... Uh, this changes the meta in a couple things for the orcs. You can't really run a war boss on a bike then, unless well, you're, you're going to have to bring a war boss on a bike back to run storm boys. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard for them to charge the turn that they, uh, sorry, for them to assault the turn they charge, you know, advance and then charge, because nothing will be able to keep up with them, unless you conga line them extremely well. Um, and then the death killer war track doesn't apply to infantry; it only applies to vehicles and bikers. So once again, you can have cans or death dreads or um, a gorkonaut, you know, uh, advancing, shooting, and then assaulting if they're within six inches of this uh, vehicle. That's pretty cool. So that is, oh, sorry. And then one more uh, HQ is Captain Badrak. Uh, he's still 84 points. And um, yeah, he's still a freebooter. No, free, he's a freebooter. Uh, no real changes to him. Movement 5 inches, weapon skill 2 up, blue skill 4 up, strength 5, toughness 4, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, 3 up save. Here we go, mob rule, deck attack, deck Is a 4, 5 up and vulnerable save. Reroll hit rolls of 1 in the shooting phase with friendly flash kit units while they're within 6 inches of them. So reroll 1s, once again, is pretty cool. 6s produce more attacks. Ammo run, Captain Badrook is accompanied by an ammo run. You can reroll 1 hit roll each time he shoots. Uh, pretty cool. And that's it. That's the HQs in a nutshell. So overall, large amounts of cuts. No more Big Mech and Custom Force Field. Big Mech on a bike. War Boss on a bike. If you want to use them, use the entries from the indices. It'll be just fine. Uh, everything that did stay kind of got increased in points. Uh, big, they're, but they're still pretty strong when combined with Here We Go and uh, the new rules. Daka, daka, daka. You know. Uh, as I said, but the big meta will change because you can't run Storm Boys with like a war boss on a bike in this codex. You have to bring the war boss on a bike from the Indice, and then you can keep doing it, all the shenanigans. So up next we have the troops. Now, here's the scary part. Boys went up in cost. Yep. Seven points now a model. Doesn't matter if they're shootout or slug a choppa. Uh, they went up in cost to one point. They're now seven points base for a boy. Sucks. So you're going to be running less boys. If you ran hordes and hordes of boys with HQs, you're going to find yourself running less boys and HQs because all the points went up. But still, boys got better. As you said, now they have access to 6-up and vulnerable saves, 6-up feel no pain, an additional attack on a 6, reroll ones to hit in the shooting phase, um, and on top of that, daka, daka, daka. So boys got better. And now their points are costed accordingly. I would have loved to see them still stay at six points, but I understand why GW raised them to seven, since now there's a lot of ways to keep one in six boys alive longer or just produce an even larger number of attacks. You know, if you can, if you get your boys up to four or five attacks on the charge, the odds are they're getting a sixth attack each almost, right? So they're, they're, it's a way of, of balancing it. And once again, they still green tied. I want to attack characteristic if they're 20 or more models. 
And then Gretchen, lonely Gretchen. Uh, no change in points cost, but they still get Daka, Daka, Daka. And you know, surprisingly dangerous in large numbers. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by models in this unit while they contain 20 or more models. The base boy is moving five inches. One skill three up, one skill five up, strength four, toughness four, one wound. Two attacks, leadership six, six up save. Gretchen are five inch movement, weapon skill five up, both skill four up, strength two, toughness two, one wound, one attack, leadership four, six up save. And that's it. So your choices for troops didn't change, of course, but the costs, according, to, you know, did go up for boys. And I understand it. They got better. They got more expensive. Yee. Up next, we have the elite choices. Uh, starting off with Mad Doc Grotznik. Mad Doc is gone up 12 points. Now he's 86 points. Uh, still the same rules. Here we go. Mob rule, Daka, 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 Cyborg body. So it's a five up, feel no pain. On a five up, you know, the wound is negated. One scalpel short of a med pack uh, is at the start of the charge phase. Mad Doc Grotznik is not within three inches of another mob friendly orc infantry unit not within one inch of an enemy unit and is within 12 inches of an enemy unit. Sorry, not within one inch of an enemy unit and is within 12 inches of an enemy unit. He will automatically attempt to charge the nearest enemy unit. He can do so even if he advanced or fell back in the same turn. Doc's tools, roll a d6. Each time friendly orc infantry or biker unit loses a wound. While he's within three inches of Mad Doc Grotznik, on a six, the wound is not lost. This is not cumulative with other Doc's tools. Cool. Then up next, Pain Boy. The big change for a Pain Boy, once again, is a, pain, a point increase up to 52 points. It used to be 40. No more bike. So there's no more Pain Boy on a bike either, which I also have that model. So no more Pain Boy on a bike. Once again, same thing. Uh, movement, 5 inches. Weapon skill, 3 up. Plus skill, 5 up. Strength, 5. Thomas, 4. 4 wounds, 4 attacks. Leadership, 6. 6 up, save. Cool. Um, the Big Mech, sorry, not the Big Mech, the Mech. Uh, the Mech, 22 points base. Uh, no more fly restrictions um, on his fixing. I'm pretty sure he used to, in the old Codex, he couldn't fix anything that could fly. That's gone. So now his mechanic rules at the end of your movement phase. You can repair a single friendly clan vehicle that is within one inches. This model regains one lost wound. A model can only be repaired once per turn. So that's a huge fix. If you want to fix your vehicles up, I think it's even if vehicles can fly, you can still do it now. The run herd. Uh, the run herd went up nine points and is now 35 points each. Movement five inches. Uh, also, all these things have, of course, daka, 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 mob rule. Here we go. Uh, the run herd is movement five inches, weapon skill three up, plus skill five up, strength four, toughness four, four wounds, three attacks, leadership up seven, six up save. Keeps the Gretchen in line. All right, so now we get to Burna Boys. Now Burna Boys actually went down in cost to ten points or to twelve points a model. Uh, they used to be fourteen, now they're twelve. Uh, they're just as viable as before. They have the Burna, which is a shooting weapon, assault D three, eight inch range, strength four, AP nothing, D one automatically. Um, you just roll for the number of attacks once for all the squad. Weapon automatically hits. And then, of course, they have in close combat, which is strength user AP minus 2, D1. That's cool. They, of course, here we go. Mob rule and Daka, Daka, Daka. Just the Daka, Daka, Daka applies if you gave him, like, a mech boy with a big shooter or custom Mega Blast or something. Obviously, because their weapons automatically hit, they can't generate any new attacks. Um, tank Busters. Still 17 points a model. No real change to them. Still, same stat lines as before. Movement 5 inches, weapon skill 3 up, plus skill 5 up, strength 4, toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 6, 6 up save. They're all on, they're all, you know, uh, given a uh, rocket launcher. Yeah. Yeah, they're all rocket launcher. Now, the thing is, with, of course, with tank busters, is that many rockets. Once again, bad moons, reroll ones, and combine that with daka, daka, daka. You got yourself some firepower, and I'd be you know you know what I mean. It's AP minus two D sort of three damage that that can really add up. Plus a squig bomb, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, the knobs got cheaper. Um, they are down from seventeen points to fourteen points now, and they're still the same knobs as before. 
Uh, movement five inches, weapon skill three up, skill five up, strength five, toughness four, two attacks, two wounds, uh, sorry, three attacks, two wounds, leadership six, four up save, then there's the boss knob, knob with wall banner is still 75 points, still gives the same benefits. Uh, wall banner, I one to hit rolls, in the fight phase for attacks made by clan units while they're within six inches of any friendly knobs with a wall banner. And uh, each time, roll d6, each time a model that flees, um, from a clan unit within three inches of a friendly clan unit with this ability, when the morale test is taken on a six up, it doesn't flee. Kind of a complicated, confusing way they wrote that. That's okay. Up next, Mega Knobs. Cheaper as well. 20 points each. Base. Uh, they used to be 25. Same stat line as an orc boy, except an extra wound. Uh, sorry, extra tough. Uh, extra wound, I believe? Yeah, extra wound. One less movement because they're slower in mega armor, so two up save. Once again, uh, that kit will be popular because then you can buy the Big Mac with custom force field and mega armor. Uh, knobs on Warbikes still exist. That's good. They didn't get removed. Knobs on Warbikes went down four points as well. Uh, they're now 38 points. And once again, I really love knob bikers. They're 14 inch movement, weapon skill three up, blow skill five up, strength five, toughness five, three wounds, three attacks. Leadership 6, 4 up save, but once again, combine that with Daka Daka Daka, combine that with Bad Moon's rules, combine that with uh, Evil Sun's rules, combine that with Goff's rules. There are some crazy ways, even combine with Death Skull's rules or Snakebite's rules. Any of the rules really can help knob bikers. They can be more salty, faster, jump out of combat and jump right back in. They can shoot like heck. Six shots each. Sixes produce an additional attack. Reroll ones. You'd be surprised how much firepower you can put out. And remember, it is strength uh, five, 18 inch range, AP nothing, D1. But it can still pump out a lot of firepower and they can hit pretty hard in close combat. So expect them to be shot pretty quickly in a game. Commandos went from nine points to eight points now. And uh, they have a new, um, they have throat slitters as well which is that new rule. Add one to wound rolls for attacks made with this unit's melee weapons when targeting enemy units wholly within terrain. And of course, daka daka daka, here we go, mob rule. Uh, that's it for the elites. So as, as we discussed, a lot of the characters got more expensive, but the units got cheaper. So overall, I'd say it's a wash. I really like Burna Boys. I really, really like knob bikers, of course. You know I have tons of them. I think they're gonna be stupidly powerful in this codex, combined with several of the cultures. Um, yeah, and plus, uh, yeah, they're just crazy, you know? Now, the only thing is, of course, you want to, you because they're bikers, you'd want to run them, of course, with the new vehicle or a war boss on a bike from the old uh, rule set, and that way they can, uh, you know, assault the turn that they, they charge in as well. Uh, boom deck us now, sorry, now we're up to the fast attack choices. Now the fast attack choices is where all the new units other than that one HQ came in. Not the most amount of changes per se, but just the mo most amount of new units. Because as you've seen, there's like five new buggies coming into play and they're really cool. So we're gonna go over them in a moment. Uh, first one of course is War Bikers. I can't believe we're already 40 minutes into this review. This is crazy. War Bikers got cheaper. They're now 23 points each. They're an orc on a bike. Cool. Custom Boosta Blasta. So now we're in the new vehicles. Custom Boosta Blasta is one of the two vehicles combined with the Shock Jump Dragster that's in Speed Freaks. So check out my uh, unboxing if you want to see more of those. The Custom Boosta Blasta is 100 points. Um, it, you can include up to two additional ones. It's 12 inch movement, weapon skill 4 up, ballistic skill 5 up, strength 5, toughness 6, 8 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 6. Four up save. It is armed with uh, a rivet cannon, which is 36 inch range, assault six, strength seven, AP minus two, D2. Hello, space marine killer, right? That's gonna go through uh, Primaris Marines like no one's business. And four Burna exhausts. And each crew member is armed with a stick bomb and grot blast up. So the Burna exhaust is eight inch range, assault D3, four inch. Uh, sorry, strength four, AP dash, D1, unit automatically hits because it's a flamer. So four D3 flaming shots at eight inch range. Cool. 
plus a rivet cannon. It's going to go through. Uh, it's going to go through a lot of infantry. So cool stuff there. Uh, it has some special rules. Grot Gunner. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made with the Grot Blasta. Cool. Which is pistols, you know. Riding shotgun. When this model shoots, it can throw a grenade and shoot with the pistol in addition to any other weapons. Spiked Ram. Each time this model finishes a charge move, select an enemy unit within one inch of it and roll d6 on a four suffers d3 mortal wounds. And explodes, of course. And of course it has, here we go, mob rule, daka daka daka. Speed mob, which is just the, um, which is just the, uh, you know, rule for placing them. Up next we have shock jump drag stuff. I think a, a word, I don't remember what it is. I don't remember. It's a group of vehicles. Yeah. Uh, so next we have Shock Jump Dragsta. I really, really like this one. 14-inch um, movement. Strength, weapon skill 4 up, blitz skill 5 up, strength 5, toughness 6, 8 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 6, 4 up save. It's 108 points, I think. Now the cool thing about this is it has a custom shock rifle. Now the custom shock rifle is 24-inch range, assault 2, heavy 8, AP minus 3, D, D6, and each time you roll an unmodified hit roll of 1 for this weapon, it gets hot, bear suffers a mortal wound. Once again, give him bad moons, reroll ones. And uh, also each time you make a wound roll of six up for this weapon, target suffers a mortal wound in addition to other damage. But here's where it gets really cool. They have a rule called shock tunnel, grot gunner, and explodes. Grot gunner, add one, uh, sorry, add two to hit rolls for attacks made with this model's custom shock rifle. So it actually hits on threes not fives. So threes, reroll ones with bad moons, D uh, extra uh, damage, sorry, extra attack if you hit a six. That's, this vehicle is scary and your opponent will shoot at it very quickly. It's eight wounds. And here's a really fun rule. If you advance with it, you have to roll a dice. And obviously, when you do your, your advance roll, if you roll a four up on your advance dice, you have to remove it from the table, you have to, and place it like a deep strike, nine inches or more from your opponent, and then you roll a dice and on a four, but takes a mortal wound. That's kind of wacky. Up next, we have the Boom Daka Snaz Wagon. It's uh, 95 points. It, you can take up to a couple of others. One, each model is equipped with a mech special and big shooter, and each model's crew is armed with burner bottles and rot blasters. It is 12 inch movement, Weapon skill 4 up, list skill 5 up, strength 5, toughness 6, 8 inch movement, 4 attacks, leadership 6, 4 up save. Its mech special is 24 inch range, assault 9, strength 5, AP minus 2, D1. It's not my favorite of the guns so far. And the big shooter and the burn bottles are, are grenades 2D6, strength 4, AP nothing, D1. So once again, pretty cool. You know, each model's crew is armed with, yeah, so one uh, burn -a bottle Units do not receive cover uh, from attacks with a burn -a bottle It has Grot Gunner, so add one to hit rolls for the attacks made with the big shooters and Grot Blasta. Billowing Fumes, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made with ranged weapons that target this model. Riding Shotgun, when this model shoots, it can throw a grenade and pistol. Cool. It's cool. It's not my favorite of the new vehicles. Up next, we have the Mega Track. A bug is running across the floor. Uh, up next, we have the Mega Track Scrapjack. This is pretty cool, too. It's 90 points, movement 10 inches, weapon skill 4 up, plus skill 5 up, strength 6, toughness 6, 9 wounds, 9 wounds, Stra attacks 4, leadership 6, 4 plus save. It is armed with a rocket cannon, two twin big shooters. Wing missiles and a nose drill. So this thing is armed to the teeth. So the rocket cannon is 24 inch range, assault 2d3, strength 8, AP minus 2d3. So once again, 2d3 rocket shots versus the you know normal one. That could be pretty cool. Once again, combine that with Daka Daka and Evil Suns or Bad Moon stratagems, you have some hilarity uh, stratagems with rules, and you've got yourself some hilarity. Uh, twin big shooters, of course, so 12 shots there. So I guess it has two twin mix shooters on it. Yes, two twin mix shooters, so 12 shots. 
Strength 5, AP nothing, D1. And Wing Missiles, 24 inch range, Assault 1, Strength 8, AP minus 2, D3. Add 1 to hit rolls for attacks made with this weapon against vehicle units. Subtract 1 for hit rolls for attacks against all other targets. And it has Spiked Ram, so each time the model finishes a charge, move, select an enemy unit within 1 inch of it, and roll D6 on the 4, but suffers D3 more wounds. Pretty cool. Here we go. Mob rule. Daka, daka, daka. Speed freaks. Speed mob. Yeah. And then finally, the Rucka Truck Squig Buggy. Great name. 140 points, so you know it's going to be cool. 10 inch movement. Weapon skill 4, blitz skill 5 up. Strength 5, toughness 6, 9 wounds. 4 attacks, leadership 6, 4 up save. Each model is equipped with a heavy squig launcher and saw blades. This is not my favorite vehicle, but it's okay. And each model's crew is armed with a squig launcher, shotgun, and squid stick squigs. So, squig launcher. There's a heavy squig launcher, which has three modes. Uh, Bile Squig, 36 in train, Assault 2d6, Strength nothing, AP nothing, D1, always wounds on a 4-up, unless targeting Titanics or vehicles, and it's a 6-up. That's okay, nothing special to me. Um, Bitey Squig, 36 in, tra in train, Assault 2, Strength 5, AP minus 3, D2, but it's a 2 shots. So again, that doesn't seem very cool to me either, not anything special. Boom Squig. 36 in range, Assault 2d3, Strength 6, AP minus 1, D3, DD3, sorry. Yeah. Uh, then there's the Squig Launches, basically those same stats, same choices, but only half the number of shots. It's okay. It's cool that it has modes. I don't think any of the guns are better than I would take, like, the, the Boom Deck of Snazwig, and, or even, like, the Megatruck Scrapjet to me is the best firepower. I really like the shock jump drag stuff for the, uh, the gun. It's okay. For the points, I don't think I'll be taking that one very often. Storm Boys. Up one point to nine points a model rather than eight. Same, still the same as stats before. 12 in range. Weapon still three up. Blitz still five up. Strength four times four. One wound, two attacks. Leadership six. Six up save. Same rules before. Full throttle. You know, if you advance with them, you roll a d6 for each model. On a, on a six, they take a more wound. Or a one, sorry, they take a more wound. They can deep strike. Uh, once again, Storm Boys got better because they have Daka 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 and they have all these access to stratagems and they have access to um, cultures. So they're a little more expensive. Now the big nerf to them though is the fact that they can't, unless you take the index model, it's going to be very hard to assault with them at the turn that they, uh, that they charge. Let me double check to make sure that Zag struck doesn't count. I don't think he did. No. Then so. That's them. Devcopters. Cheaper. Significantly cheaper. Now they're only 30 points base. They're down from, I think, 55. So that's a huge drop in points. So, and then rockets. They have, um, their, their rockets also got cheaper by 4 points. So it's 24 points. So now for 54 points, you can get a Def Copto with the, uh, the Copter Rockets, Assault 2, Strength 8, AB-2, D3. But um, once again, here we go, Mob Rule and Daka 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 can really mess with these things. They have Turbo Boost and Scouting Ahead. Mech Guns. So the Mech Guns were one of the spammed units from the previous Index. So you know what's going to happen with them, right? They got better, they also got more expensive. They basically doubled in cost, but they also doubled in damage output. So that's pretty cool. Now, the most popular mech gun was the Custom Mega Cannon. Uh, so let's go through them one by one. So Bubble Chucka, 30 points. It used to be 32. Uh, it's pretty much stayed the same, except it removed the um, the like weird abilities. I remember it had a weird, really weird rule, and that's just strength. Oh yeah, the the advance like you take turns with your opponent. You roll for the, the number of heavy, and then you place a dice, and then the, the strength, and you place a dice, and then the AP, and you place a dice, and, and you the D, and it was really random. You'd have fun with your opponent, roll dice, and then, you know, you take the, the bubble checkup. That's gone. Now it's just, you know, 48 inch range, heavy D6, strength D6, AP minus D6, and D D6. No rule. Custom Mega Cannon. It's now 45 points. It went up by 22 points. Now the big change is it's now heavy D6, 
Strength 8, AP minus 3, DD6. I believe it used to be DD3. So now it's DD6. Double the damage. If one or more rolls of 1, the bear suffers a mortal wound. And uh, it also has Daka Daka and Orc Clan. So once again, combine it with Bad Moons, people. Bad Moons is going to be hilarious um, with mech guns. Smash a gun. It's now 16 points, but it went from... Uh, what it did... Uh, it's now heavy D3. Uh, strength dash AP minus 4, DD6. Instead of making two wound rolls of weapon, roll 2D6. As a result, is equal to or greater than the target's toughness. The attack is successfully wounds. Uh, tractor Cannon is now 30 points. It used to be 15. Um, and now it is heavy 1, DD6. It used to be DD3 as well. And... Uh, if the target is an enemy vehicle or a unit that can fly, roll two dice when inflicting damage and discard the lowest. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's an aerial. Grok in a nutshell. They're double the cost, but they're still pretty scary, especially when combining them with, with Daka 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 and uh, Orc Clan traits. Battle Wagon. Battle Wagon got reduced to 120 points. Now, the thing is with the Battle Wagon now, there's three Battle Wagons. There's the Battle Wagon, which is the standard Battle Wagon. It is a single model. It's not equipped with anything. And you can give any what you want to it. You know? It's uh, movement, of course, depending on the number of wounds. It's between 6 and 12 inch movement. Uh, 8, strength 4 to 8. Assaults, D, uh, sorry, attacks D3 to 6, depending on the number of wounds. It starts at 16. And it's just base. It's a base model. It's open topped. It's a transport. You can give it art case, um, and nor is the penalty for firing and heavy firing heavy weapons and moving. Um, and then now you have a couple other options. So you can create your you know your custom battle wagon if you want. You can go with a gun wagon. Now a gun wagon is uh, a little bit more expensive, but you get you know all the upgrades of the, it, it, you know it's pre-launched. Um, but a gun wagon is 140 point space, and then it comes with a uh, a cannon and a periscope. So the cannon is heavy D has two different modes, 36 inch range, heavy D6, strength 4, AP nothing, D1, or 36 inch range, heavy 1, strength 8, AP minus 2, D6. It also has a periscope, which uh, if it, the model remains stationary, moves under half speed in its movement, it can shoot twice in the following shooting phases with its cannon, kill cannon, or zap gun. Now we give it a zap gun, it's heavy 1, 36 inch range, strength 2d6, AP minus 3, DD3. D3. But before firing this weapon roll to determine the strength of the shot, it's 11 or more. Roll in, uh, do not make a wound roll. Instead, the attack hits and it causes three more wounds. Cool. The bear then suffers one mortal wound. And next, we have the Bone Breaker. It, once again, it is a. Uh, sorry, I'm getting messages. Uh, the Bone Breaker is basically a kill, uh, battle wagon with a death roll. That's it. Bone Breaker Ram. At D6 to the attack's characters of this model in the fight phase until the end of that phase. If it makes a charge, move this turn. And the, uh, of course, the death roll is strength plus 1, AP minus 2, D2. Add 3 to hit rolls for attacks made with this weapon. So it hits on two ups. Cool. Up next, my favorite part of this codex. You know by many of you, I love my can wall. I love my walker lists and I love it. And so this section will really... Um, so basically for the next, uh, you know, several choices, pick your favorite clan rule. I think it'll work very well with evil sons. It'll work very well with goths. My favorite though, bad moons, bad moons for killicans, for death dreads, for morconauts, for gorkonauts, and for ludas, bad moons. I love them. Uh, Killicans got cheaper. They're now down to 40 points each. Now, there were some changes to Killicans. First of all, no more custom Mega Blasters. 
They're not in the, in the box, so they're not in the codex. Makes sense. Uh, second thing is that, of course, there's still movement six inches, weapon skill five up, let skill four up, strength five times five, five wounds. I think I was playing in my first codex review. My, I did play test this in a battle report. I think I played them as four wounds. I apologize, that's okay. Uh, five attacks, leadership attacks three, leadership six, three up save. Um, they have access to the Grazuka, the Rocket Launcher, the Scorcha. But now there's also new melee weapons. Now my favorite weapon by far of these Killicans is the Rocket Launcher because uh, the Rocket Launcher is Assault 1. So if you take six of them, that's 30 wounds between them, hitting on five, fours because they're Grats, reroll ones, sixes produce additional attacks. You'd be surprised the amount of firepower damage these guys can put out. Uh, and... So that now they have access to two, three different uh, types of close combat weapons. And now obviously all of them are modeled in the kit. I've been always playing them as claws, and I will continue to play them all as claws. But they now have three different types of close combat weapons. Uh, there's the buzzsaw, which is strength plus two, so it ended up being uh, seven. AP minus two, D two. Each time bear fights, you can make one additional attack with this weapon. So it, they get you know an extra attack, but not as much damage. Uh, Drilla, strength plus one, so six, AP minus four, D2. Each time you roll in a modified roll of six, the bear, so the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to the damage. That's cool. Kill Clan Claw, Clan Claw, Can Claw. Strength plus three, AP minus three, D3. To me, that's my favorite one. Uh, no bonuses. Uh, scrap them, add one to the attack's characteristic if the unit contains three or more. Models, and each time one dies, it explodes. Cool. So that's cans. I love them. They're awesome. We're about to cross an hour into this video. I can't believe that. And I still have so many more things to cover. Uh, up next, Death Dreads. Once again, they got cheaper by 19 points. They're 55 points a model. They have the new weapons once again. The, there's now a Dread Saw. And now, for those of you know, now you can't have all Dread Claws on your, your Death Dread. They have to be, uh, they start with two Dread Claws and two Big Shooters. You can replace any of those weapons with a Dread Saw. The Dread Claw is Strength times 2, AP minus 3, D3, and it can make one additional attack with each Dread Claw it's equipped with. But a Dread Saw is Strength plus 4, AP minus 2, D2, um, and each time the bear fights, it can make one additional attack with each Dread Saw it's equipped with. Cool. And there's a Dread Mob. You have to put the unit in coherency. If you start them off the table, they can explode. Here we go, Daka Daka Daka. Also, the Killicans also have Daka Daka Daka, not Here We Go. So they can't assault as, as efficiently, but uh, they can still get in combat. They have Orc Clans, once again, amazing sauce. So next we have the Morkonaut and the Gorkonaut. Now these each got reduced by about 50 points each. They're about 310 points a model, give or take one or two points. They both got reduced by about 50 points and they both got much better as far as Daka Daka goes. Number one, they have Daka Daka Daka, which is huge because they're two giant gun machines, right? Um, once again, combine that with bad moons. They get to reroll ones to hit, huge. Number two, uh, they can fall back and shoot in the same turn, uh, but the Morkonauts guns got better, uh, specifically the Mega Zap, it's called the Custom Mega Zappa now. It used to be the, you know, it's the big chest gun. It's now, it used to be heavy D6, now it's heavy 3D3, right? That's huge. So it's heavy 3D3, strength 8, AP minus 3, D, DD6, um, and it gets hot. But um, that's huge. Going from D6 at 36 inch range to heavy 3D3 means that the old range was 1 to 6, the new range is 3 to 9, and the averages would go from 3.5 to 6. Huge. So cheaper, more fire output, easier to hit, plus the bonus of Daka Daka Daka. And um, the other guns stay the same. It's Custom Mega Blasta. Uh, it has a rocket launcher, a couple Twin Big Shootas, so tons of firepower to kill your opponents. And the Claw of Gork or possibly Mork. Uh, you can also give it the Custom Force Field, which is my favorite component. Um, the 310 point, as I mentioned, is with the custom force field. I think it's it's a necessity, only because it becomes, you know what, give a five up invulnerable save to everything around it. It's the only other model besides the uh, Big Mac that has the custom force field. I like it. Up next, the Gorkonaut, the more salty version. 
it's less um, hard hitting and shooty as against it doesn't have as much AP, but it has a couple extra attacks and it also has a lot of DACA. So once again, the same rules. Here we go. DACA, DACA, DACA. You can give it bad moons. It's big gun is no longer heavy 3d6, it's now heavy 18. Strength 6, AP minus 1, D1. Huge. Right? Huge. Going from 3d6, so minimum 3 up to a maximum of 18, it got cheaper, and it's now heavy 18. Plus it has a Scorcher, Rocket Launchers, Big Shooters, right? Hitting on 5s, but once again, Reroll ones if it's bad moon. Sixes produce additional hits. Or sorry, hits. Additional attacks. You can, you'd be insanely surprised at how much firepower the Gorkonaut can put out now. I love it. And of course, they're both transports. They have, here we go, daka, daka, daka. But they can only transport six models. Ludas. Ludas stayed the same in points cost, but once again, as, as I mentioned, they got better. Because of daka, 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 they got better. And because, again, you can combine them with bad moons and reroll ones. And there's also a stratagem that I should mention that you can choose any orc infantry for two command points. And after they... There's two good stratagems that work very well with Ludas. The first one is that you choose a stratagem. Uh, sorry, you choose uh, a unit that's already fired, and they can fire again for two command points. So you can make Ludas pump out two volumes of shots. Crazy. On top of that, you can also, there's also a better, uh, there's a strategy to increase Daka Daka Daka, and you can use it on any Orc Infantry as well, that it's on fives and sixes producing additional attack. Once again, with Ludas, insane. Up next, we have Flash Kits. Flash Kits got more expensive from 27 points, now they're at 30 points. Their guns got better though. Uh, their Snaz guns are now Strength 6, they used to be Strength 5. They're 24 inch range guns. Strength 6, AP minus 2, D2, they, here we go. Daka, daka, daka. They're not, they're, they don't have a clan, they have, they're free Buddhas, right? They're, they don't have a specific, you can't give them the Evil Sun's rules. Uh, they have gun crazy show offs though. After this unit is shot in the shooting phase, roll d6. On a 6 up, the unit can immediately shoot again, but can only target the closest uh, enemy unit. Get find a squid. Squig, add one to hit rolls for shooting attacks made by the captain with a get find a squig. They have an ammo runt as well. Up next, we have the truck. Got more expensive. It's uh, 59 points. It used to be 54. And we have the Dakajet, Burnabama, and Blitzabama. They haven't changed much, much at all. Now, once again, the big benefits is Daka Daka Daka. So it helps them just pull out some more firepower. Uh, they're still the same points as before. I'm going to go, uh, there are 108 points for the Blitzabama, 102 points for the Burnabama, 88 points for the Dakajet. And 99 points for the Waz, the Waz bomb that blasted jet. I'm gonna only skim them through quickly because we're an hour into the video, and I, I think we got been getting what we've been going through. Up next we have the Stompa. The Stompa got point drops in points by 50 points, so now it's 850 points base. Still, you know, 40 wounds, um, movement 12 inches at full strength, uh, bullet skill three, uh, weapon skill three up at full strength, six attacks. Five ups a hit. You can give it all its guns. It's cool stuff. It's not going to be... It's a stomp, but it's fun to take. It's not the most competitive unit. You can't really give it, you know, the clan... Uh, it does have work clans, but as I said, it does. you can't take it in detachments. Uh, super heavy detachments are excluded from the rules for that. It, it does have Daka Daka Daka, though. So that can produce... Um, that can produce some... Uh, Firepower. Some really good firepower. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's good. And that's the Stompa. And next, we have the new fortification. I forgot to bring that up. Orcs got a fortification. It's called the Mex. It's the Mech Boy Workshop. It's 80 points. And it's a structure. Uh, it has a grab and claw. So at the start of a fight phase, before any units, uh, any units have chosen to fight, one orc infantry unit from your army that is within one inch of the model can operate the mech boy's grab and claw. If it does so, select an enemy within one inch of this model and roll a d6. On a four up, that enemy unit suffers d3 moral wounds. Kind of cool, but very circumstantial. Your opponent will probably just avoid going near it. Custom job. At the end of your movement phase, one orc vehicle unit from your army that is within one inch of this model can receive a custom job. 
If it does so, then until the end of the turn, that unit cannot shoot or charge, and the attacks characteristics of the models in that unit is reduced to one. But you can choose and resolve one of the following effects. More speed until the end of your next movement phase. Increase the movement characteristic of the model in the unit by six inches. Cool. In addition, roll the d6 uh, to see if the unit receives something extra. On a six, add one to the charge rolls for that unit for the rest of the battle. One's called more rivets. That unit regains D3 in your lost wounds. If there's a big mech or mech from your army within one inch of this model, uh, it gains three back instead of D3. Uh, in addition, roll a D6 to see if the unit receives extra special. Uh, on a six up, it plus one in toughness for that unit for the rest of the battle. And finally, more DACA. Choose one weapon, excluding a bubble checker. That is a model in the unit is equipped with. The next time any, any models in this unit fire that weapon, the weapon makes the maximum number of attacks, so rather than like heavy 2d6, it would do 12 shots. In addition, roll d6 to see if, if the unit receives something extra special. On a 6, add 1 to the chosen weapon's damage characteristic for the rest of the battle. A unit can only receive a custom job once per turn. Very, very cool. Very cool. And that's it. That's the orcs in a nutshell. We've gone over clan cultures. We've gone over all the new rules. We've gone over everything minus the stratagems, which I'll go over in a future video, and maybe like the uh, the shiny gubbins, because I'm an hour in. Frankly, I'm a little tired. I'll put out a new video tomorrow. We've gone over the warlord traits, all the points adjustments. Um, orc boys, of course, are still base. You know, movement five inches, strength six, uh, web skill. 3 up, let's go 5 up, strength 4, toughness 4, 1 wound. Uh, those are asking. But that's it. That's it in a nutshell. So what do I think? I think the Orc Codex is greatly improved. I think things did get more expensive, but the reason is that they got more expensive is because they got better. And I think the Orcs are going to be a much more competitive army. And I really hope you guys enjoy the new Codex. A lot of HQs were removed. A lot of characters were removed. Um, a lot of things got more expensive. But things got better, and I really think the strength of this codex lies in the heavy support choices, especially in combination with like bad moons and daka 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 is such an amazing new special rule. But most importantly, what do you people out there in internet land think of the new orc codex? Are you as excited to play test and have some fun with this codex as I am? I really hope so. I really I do like this codex. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna stay optimistic. I think it's a a real improvement in a lot of ways. Um, will it be a meta changer? We'll have to see. Um, but definitely, so most importantly, what do you guys think of the new Orc Codex? Leave comments in the comment section down below of what you, of what did I talk about? What you think that, uh, what do you think about it? What are you most excited for? What are you least excited for? Let's create a discussion. As always, this video is brought to you by my Patreon subscribers. It's because of them that I can continue to do these videos. Link in the description below if you want to help support my campaign. Definitely stay tuned for more videos. And obviously, like my video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so, and comment in the comment section down below. Stay tuned for more Codex reviews. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy grading.